Good morning, everyone. Hope, hope you guys are having a blessed day today. We are getting a little bit of moisture down here in Bakersfield, California. And, and it looks like the boys are getting a little snow up in Mammoth. I hung back because I'm grabbing a, a load of wood for our forest trail deck rebuild project that we're working on up there had a bunch of 8x12 beams and some 8x8 posts that were like a special order so today's tuesday the everything's supposed to come in tomorrow we're gonna go down to uh 84 lumber get that loaded up and start heading north tomorrow afternoon and hopefully the they'll have their concrete and everything all figured out by then they'll have a, the new footings and everything um poured either thursday or friday so by the time i get up there with that wood um shouldn't have too much of an issue um start putting that thing back together and then we're gonna go with a nice metal railing on top it's gonna be super cool um real quick job that was just basically a rebuild from the uh crazy snow that we had actually squashed those beams it literally like crushed them so they were six by uh material before six by post and six by beams six by 12 so now we're going with eight by with all heavier buckets heavier everything so which i didn't realize that i made a dumb rookie move i was looking at all the hardware and i didn't even think about the fact that um, I guess I didn't realize that the original material was six by and it bumped to eight by so like somehow that just slipped by So I was gonna try and reuse those buckets and because they were in good shape, but uh, Not gonna work guys. We're gonna have to uh, We ordered the eight by buckets. So those will all be uh, up there and ready to go and we will Hopefully get that thing put back together, you know quickly because we have some time but uh, we never know when time's going to run out with the snow so it's been really lack on the snow this year so we're still kind of just kind of tippy toeing into the into the winter doing a little little projects here and there with construction trying not to uh trying not to get in trouble having something opened up and then not going to be able to get it done because the snow hit us like last year and that's exactly what happened last year we had a bunch of stuff opened up and we got hammered with snow and it, it completely ruined our plans and it was all about snow so this year um i still think we're gonna get a substantial amount in january and february i keep thinking that uh, i keep hoping that because i want to get you guys some good content uh some good snow content that's what plow brothers is all about snow content we're having to like shift our whole our whole uh content to just other stuff just to keep you guys somewhat engaged and uh hopefully when this snow hits we'll we'll be back on on track with uh with some solid snow plow content for you so stick around i'm gonna go get that lumber I'm gonna do some run some errands in bakersfield and then we're gonna get on the road up to mammoth in the next day or two so should be fun another road trip in the books and we'll go from there see we got a little moisture it's pretty black and dark over there um so first thing we're gonna do is go over here to mike's dad's place and uh, drop off this pintle hitch got a pintle for the big truck for a big semi truck that we have and i've got a trailer that will work for our smaller loaders and our telehandlers and stuff like that that weighs you know around 30,000 so I got an equipment trailer that I've had for a long time that'll that'll handle that stuff but it's a tongue pull it's not an actual um you know a uh a fifth wheel hitch mount like a regular semi would be we were originally going to use the gooseneck trailer um but that trailer's a little lighter and I just um it's not really rated for 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 that kind of weight so i think we're going to be better off with this uh with this equipment trailer for the small loaders you know skidsters 
and uh, I, hopefully it doesn't look too goofy behind a semi truck i don't think i've seen it before i've seen people doing it you don't see it very often it's definitely not something you're going to see every day but um it's going to work for us to get these smaller equipment back and forth when we need to without essentially having to pay um you know a carrier to do it for us so we're gonna pull in here and grab that out of here real quick it's just a uh where did i put that oh you know what wow i am just really spaced out apparently this is what happens when you get older i guess uh i was driving my other truck yesterday and that's where the pintle is so now we're gonna go back home and grab the pintle out of the truck and then we'll come back and do what we just drove all the way over here to do all right let's try this again there it is that's the 15 ton pintle hook Let's go take it over to Mike's dad's. Okay, we're gonna drop the old pintle off here at Mike's shop. I'll just leave it right here by the gate. And then they're gonna bring the semi over later and uh, get that thing mounted. Once I'm in town, I just popped over here to the old T90F, TN90F. This uh, vineyard tractor that I have, and I got the serial number there. We're going to uh, go see our friends over at San Joaquin Valley Tractor today and see about that uh, air quality control. Here's that trailer that we got the Pinto for. So it's got an adjustment here that's nice. Looks like it's as high as it's gonna go here. Um, so we're gonna have, I'm gonna have to send that info to him actually right now. All right, so this is pretty much sitting about how I would want to run it um, down the highway. A little bit high in the front, just, just a tad. And then once you get some weight on there, um, you know, it'll level out. So I'm going to measure this because I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to go with... Uh, uh, it's right about 20 a little over 28 to the center let's say 28 and a quarter to the center of that so uh now we're gonna go back here to this truck the big truck right there so we're gonna check the frame on this thing and see so here's where we want to put it, right here, I think. Um, kind of what we were talking about, so it doesn't it necessarily block the uh, running lights. And so the center of that frame is pretty darn close to the same 28 uh, and a quarter that we want. So that's gonna work pretty slick i'm thinking we're probably gonna punch a couple holes in the frame or whatever we do there to where it's bolted everything's bolted to that frame we're gonna put a piece of c channel in there and we're gonna mount that pintle hitch to that somewhere right around that height that we were looking at and i think we're gonna be in pretty good shape to be towing that tongue pull with this truck it's got the same wiring so the plug for the electrical is gonna be the same. It's got air brakes, just like this truck. So like I said, it may not look normal going down the highway, but it's gonna serve the purpose that we need, which is gonna to be to get that 914 up to Mammoth. And then one of our telehandlers that's up there, we're gonna bring that back. This old girl here, we got the oil changed. I got some chains for it. They're already up in Mammoth, so we're ready ready to put those on as soon as it gets up there. I replaced the glass on the front. It's got nice fresh glass on it. Um, we're gonna get a new cutting edge tomorrow put on here 
and then this thing's going on a truck and it's heading to mammoth we've uh, gone through everything checked the linkage on the brakes everything's looking good we're going to add some more running lights on it so we have more vision front and back we got some led lights for it so by tomorrow afternoon this thing should be 100 percent done and ready to travel and we're going to load it up on the semi on our on our smaller equipment trailer and we're going to ship it to mammoth this trailer here i'll be putting uh all that lumber tomorrow on it it's uh this trailer's a little short but i got some 20 footers so they are going to stick out a little we're we'll have to red flag them we'll put those on the bottom put the beams on top beams are only uh 12 foot i think we got a couple 14 footers and 12 so uh we will be we'll be uh running a little abnormal here too but that's all we got the big trailers up in mammoth already so i gotta make it work yeah as soon as we get that pintle on the truck we're gonna take this dump truck out to the ranch dump it off it's one that actually caught on fire and uh it was a cool truck paid 500 dollars for this truck and it has a working operating dump um bed on it so you just i mean we used this thing for so many demo jobs a couple years ago. And then uh, somehow one of the guys was driving it and it caught on fire in the middle of an intersection up there and burned up everything under the hood. Didn't really hurt the motor. I've just burned up all the wires and the, some of the rubber underneath. Hey guys, now we're gonna head on over to Quinn Cat in Bakersfield and uh, Got to drop off a check to my, my guy Daniel over there. Those guys have been instrumental in uh, keeping us in business. They've just done such a great job with support. And um, anytime I'm doing something crazy, they always uh, come through and sponsor me for like my motocross events and things like that. So just a great relationship we have with these guys. And uh, we'll pop in there real quick and drop off this check. And then we're going to make our rounds. Win cat so yeah like i was saying uh daniel and these guys over here at quinn have really been an instrumental part of our success in business because they've always provided us with top-notch service and uh the best equipment and we just love working with these guys they really uh help us out every chance they get and it just really makes life easy when you're working with a company like Quinn. And uh, they they just take care of you at every corner, every obstacle that you face with your equipment. They're right there to support you. And uh, it's been a great relationship over all the last almost 10 years now that we've been uh, dealing with these guys and getting equipment from them. So it's pretty cool to be able to say that. We'll call here. And there's their big parts warehouse here. They got all the parts they stock. And uh, we'll go talk to Daniel over here in the sales side of things. Check out the cat gear they got. They got all kinds of good stuff for Christmas. And all the toys, all the kitty cat toys. Might have to get me a hat. But, uh, they got all the all the goodies look at this little 301.7 it's a cool little machine the handheld x mini x almost i think getting some pretty tight spaces but still has quite a bit of power so that's pretty cool that's a nice little massey ferguson tractor too since 1919 look at that Pretty cool. Back in the good old days. I wish we were alive in that timeline. So we're gonna pick up, drop that check off, pick up a couple parts that Daniel got for us. 
the, the one and only Daniel Eccles with Quinn Caterpillar. Getting us our, our snow. Bud, quit doing that, bud. You know Daniel. Yeah, they just got an epic facility here. This is actually was just went through a huge remodel and uh, it was just here and then they added all this onto it and it's just made it like a huge facility here. But uh, like I said, these guys have been instrumental in our success and give us great support always, no questions asked. And uh, it's been a great relationship. Look at that view. Never gets old for me. The beauty of it all. So we ran back out here real quick. Um, need to uh, get some serial numbers off of these old dozers. And I figured since I'm just doing odds and ends today, I uh, might as well take care of that while I'm at it. We're gonna, I gotta get some fuel filters and just some stuff to keep these, to get these old girls running again. They've been parked for about a year and uh, I need to get them, I need to get them running. So we're gonna get these serial numbers real quick and get on back into town. We got a little rain, just a little. Not enough to even knock the dust down hardly, but uh, better than nothing, I guess. So these are both, uh, these are Case 450s, ranch dozers, six-way blades on the front. Um, very nice for working on roads and things like that. This one actually came with the property when I got it. And uh, that was the one I already had over there. Same exact one. Ironically enough, I had, I had the same dozer. But uh, yeah, so we're going to uh, check out both of these fuel filter setups. They both have a dual filter, I was wrong. I thought it was a single, but they're both a dual filter. So what we're gonna do is get the numbers off these things and uh, send them over to the lady at Sequoia Equipment so she can order what we need. We're gonna make our way out to L and W. Hey, look, there's a 914. Actually, that's a uh, yeah, that is a 914. Same exact machine we have, but a lot newer. Huh. Pretty cool. Anyhow, yeah, we're gonna go out to L and W and get some ceiling tiles. Uh, we for our current health project that we're working on down here. That's a uh, commercial building that uh, we've been consistently remodeling for the last three years it's about an 80,000 square foot building and we're constantly reconfiguring the layouts for different um, staff options turning um, conference rooms into offices and vice versa we're actually getting ready to do a big cafeteria so they will be able to um, have all of their lunch food um, provided in-house uh, it's kind of a feature that a lot of these bigger corporations they do that they will uh, they literally have like a cafeteria staff on site and they food uh, lunch food is cooked to order and it's definitely uh, that's one way to keep your employees at the job because you know when they leave for lunch, sometimes they don't make it back on time. So uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing a big kitchen for them. And then uh, we're also doing a mail room over there. So lots of fun stuff planned over there for this 2024 startup. And we also got several projects in Mammoth. So things are still looking good on the construction side of things. Wish we had more snow, but uh, it is what it is. All right, guys, it's time to head on up to Mammoth here. I got my uh, all my Christmas stuff here for some people up there. And uh, 
We're right here. We just got to the lumber yard. We're gonna load up this wood. All right, we got the wood all loaded. Some big eight by eight posts and uh, some big eight by 12 beams, post and beam stuff. So we got her all strapped down on the trailer. It's not too bad, doesn't look too bad. I thought it was gonna stick out further, but uh, it looks like it's right there, even with the ramp, so not a big deal. Let's get on the road, guys. All right, we're on the road, guys. So today we're gonna go a little bit different route up through Tehachapi along the 58 east. We'll show you a little bit of different country here than the normal Lake Isabella route that we take. It's really pretty out this way down here, uh, right before you start to go up the hill. So it'll be a, a little change of scenery for us. Nice and cloudy, you can see over there off to the south. It looks like the rain's coming down a little bit over that way. It's, uh, it's about 70 degrees though, so it's not not cold by any means so not good for the snow definitely uh, probably not gonna see any snow until after Christmas it looks like that's off towards uh, the grapevine off that way need to clean this windshield too don't I pulling here at the Murray Family Farms. It's a pretty neat place. Don't really stop here ever. It's uh, quite windy out. Maybe we'll pop in here and see what things look like inside. There's a little quick tour of the Murray Family Farms while I'm getting some fuel, huh? Well, I saw that high wind advisory and they were not joking. It's really not even windy in town and you get right out here on the outskirts and boy, it's going. So we'll check the slumber, make sure it's all good. Seems like everything's holding up pretty well. I can't tighten that one anymore. Ugh, yep, I think it's pretty solid, guys. Not going nowhere. They got oaky pies. That actually looks kind of good. Look at these pumpkins. Large pumpkins. Some big ones. Of course, uh, Halloween's over. It's almost Christmas. Thank you. Here's the, uh, never been in here. Been by here a lot of times, never never actually came in. All right. They got all kinds of goodies here. Pretty neat. Lots of jelly and jam and all kinds of homemade stuff like that. So it was a fun little stop. I got a, uh, went ahead and got one of the spicy ground beef and one of the salsa verde. You know, I'll probably get a little something sweet. Not sure just what I'll get yet. One of these, I'm sure. So here's the garden area where they grow all the food and they have a bunch of stuff for the kids to play and uh, things like that. I know they do a pumpkin patch out here. Obviously you can see massive pumpkins here. And uh, I went ahead and left about $30 lighter for lunch, but uh, it was worth the stop. Cool, cool little spot if you're ever on the 58 East passing through on your way into Bakersfield or on your way out. Um, stop in here at Murray Family Farms and check it out. They got all kinds of cool stuff. 
boy, it's windy, guys. That wind's blowing, pushing me all around a little bit. Luckily, I don't have a high load. As you can see, it's just beautiful out here. This is Caliente area. Um, just up the way will be Heart Flat, known as Heart Flat. Just a beautiful area. This is the Tejon Ranch over here. One of the largest uh, cattle ranches in California, I believe. It might even be the largest one. It's a couple hundred thousand acres. It's a big, it's a big ranch. All right, guys, we're coming on into Tehachapi here. So many trucks. Now this traffic coming out of here is, it's starting to be just like LA. It's just terrible. And these truck drivers, <clears throat> I'll tell you, I'm, I'm all about the truckers, but you know, when you're impeding traffic and you guys can only go 45 miles an hour up the hill and you're blocking both lanes and you're both going, one guy's going 45 and the other guy's going 47 to try and pass him. I don't know why you don't just wait for a half an hour until you get over the top and go as fast as you want instead of blocking miles of traffic, these trucks. See, he's over in our lane again. This guy just can't, he can't help it. And he can't, and he's not making the pass. He doesn't have the power. He does not have the power to make the pass. He has no business even trying to pass right now because he doesn't even have the power to make a pass. He's going the same speed, 42 miles an hour as the other truck. Barely, barely able to get around him. There's another one doing the same thing. Can barely get around these guys going two miles an hour faster and you want to make a pass. Like, and, it, and really this is only about a 10 or 15 mile stretch where it's uphill. So you couldn't wait 15 miles to get around somebody. You got a block, I got, I got a line of cars behind me like you wouldn't believe. But on another note, here's the quaint town of Tatchby. Quaint little cool town. They got a, I believe they have a Walmart and a Home Depot here finally. And um, it's about 45 minutes outside of Bakersfield to the east, just before you hit the Mojave Desert. And um, you can see it's a little windy up here today. But uh, we're gonna get up here to the famous um, wind turbines that are pretty much known all over the world. It's quite a, quite a big uh, bunch of those wind turbines up here. You can probably see them off in the distance over there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's the, uh, the start of them. And those things kind of carry on for several miles so there they are guys those those gigantic see that one the biggest one right there it's, it's not working that one's like twice as big as the other ones and, uh, the rest of them are all turning i know there's a bunch over here you can't really see them they're in the clouds and they're a lot smaller oh yeah i see them over there they're quite a bit smaller Okay guys, here we are in the beautiful Mojave Desert. You can see the, uh, the start of the gigantic solar fields of Cal City. These fields um, are very large. They carry on for miles, miles and miles of solar panels on both sides of the highway here. And um, so you kind of see that, a little bit of that right there. It was really windy coming up the hill. It's almost like a vacuum out here. Um, there's not very much wind at all. So I think it's on its way. We got, we kind of got out in front of it, which is uh, kind of nice because usually it's pretty windy out here and uh, it'll push you all over the place when you're driving. So this area is known as the Red Rock area. If you look, those formations, very interesting the way that 
almost looks like a city, you know, up against the mountains there, but it's just the formation of the dirt there. It's pretty neat. Uh, I flew the drone out here a long time ago. If you look up one of my older videos, and I got close to some of those formations with the drone, and it made some pretty cool footage. Pretty dark over that way. That's normally uh, about where I come down at, out of Lake Isabella. It's kind of right over where I'm looking right now with the camera. So yeah, right there's my normal turn off. Going up over through Walker Pass back there. Looks a little nasty back there. Definitely probably getting, getting some rain up in that area. y'all that's gonna be it for this video really appreciate you guys following along with the channel and uh, don't forget to like comment on the video let us know what you think check out plowbrothers365.com as always thank you guys for following along and we'll see you on the next one